one we are live okay so good morning everyone hi good morning we are back recording in our... progress good morning everyone and we are back with our weekly journal clubs and today our topic is lateral condyle fractures its current concepts and management and it's a great pleasure to introduce dr amardeep singh who will be our guest speaker today sir did his masters from amritsar and then then did his pediatric orthopedic fellowship with dr jawhari in 2006 after which he practiced in amritsar for 5 years and then he moved to canada did further fellowships and residency and currently he is associated with mcmaster's university hamilton canada so without which wasting much time i would i would like sir to share his screen and start the talk uh, hi everybody thank you garo uh, okay let me share my share screen share the questions on the chat box and we'll take the questions after the talk okay so you have to uh, uh able yeah so it says host host disabled participant share screen sharing Okay. Now you can share sir. Yeah. Here we go. One second. Yeah, I went to the end of the slide show. We are done. Bye. Okay. Uh, I can't. First screen, go click. Okay. First okay. Click yeah. Okay. I think that's the problem. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So we'll talk about. fracture of lateral condyle humerus uh thanks karo uh my disclosure some slides were taken from posna and some from orthopulets uh the objectives of uh, today's uh, talk would be to understand the epidemiology uh, anatomy how do we classify uh, treatment uh, what fixation methods are commonly used and what are the advantages disadvantages of each uh, uh, a new approach to treatment of lateral condyle uh, some tips and controversies Lateral condyle uh, is the second most common fracture around the elbow after the supracondylar fractures. Average age is around six to ten years, and uh, uh, most common. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, they are Salter Harris type four. Uh, the main concerns about these fractures are the joint congruence, uh, physial preservation, and they have a higher risk of non-union, malunion, and AVN as compared to other elbow fractures. Uh, on examination, when the kids present, they might might have some swelling and tenderness limited to the lateral side. It lacks the obvious deformity uh, as seen in the supracondylar fractures, so you have to be very cautious. Uh, lateral ecchymosis implies a tear in the aponeurosis of the brachioradialis and signals an unstable fracture. Uh, for imaging, X-rays are important, but sometimes you might not be able mm -hmm. to see. a fracture in a ap or a lateral view and here comes the importance of uh, internal oblique uh, view uh arthrogram is also an, a useful adjunct which can be done intraoperatively sometimes sorry when you have undisplaced fracture then you want to make sure whether it goes to the articular surface or not and whether it's displaced or not you can order a ct or mri uh There are two mechanisms of injury which have been postulated. One is pull-off theory by the extensor musculature and push-off theory by the radial head. Uh, fracture originates proximally at the posterior aspect of distal humerus, 
and extend distally and anteriorly across the physis and epiphysis into the elbow joint, as you can see here. It may extend medially into the trochlear groove, and then that time the elbow can become unstable and uh, uh, we can have a posterior medial elbow dislocation. This is a very important uh, to understand generally for all the elbows uh, when all these ossification centers appear. So everybody, I, I, I hope I would uh, know this, Crito, uh, and we utilize 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. Uh, for example, so this on the left side, this is a X-ray of uh, elbow injury and everything appears normal except this small lien on the lateral side here. So could it be ossification center of lateral epicondyle or is it uh, uh, something else? So if you see uh, as per crito, capitulum, capitulum appears at one year, radial head appears at three year, there is a small ossification center appearing. Uh, if this was a lateral epicondyle or external epicondyle, uh, which means the kid is 11 year old, you should have internal or medial epicondyle, trochlea and olecranon in this X-ray, but you don't see all these in this X-ray. So this could not be a lateral epicondyle. They, it cannot appear before all this. So it signifies a lateral condyle fracture, small flag here, and you can confirm this on the lateral view. So this is very important to remember for all elbow fractures and to see oh, which uh, ossification center is present, does it relate to the age and uh, whether this is normal for this age or this is something abnormality. Uh, classification, there are like 100 classifications for uh, this fracture. Uh, the one very commonly used uh, was initially Milch type one and two. Uh, Milch is when it goes, uh, through the lateral condyle, not into the trochlear area, and then this goes into trochlea. This does not guide treatment, though. It is more of mechanical classification. Uh, you have uh, the Jacob classification is another one uh, divided into three types. Uh, type one is non-displaced, and it does not involve the uh, articular surface. Type two, it is mild, mildly displaced and goes into the uh, articular surface, but it's not rotated as in three. Uh, then there is Weiss classification, less than two millimeter, more than two millimeter with intact articular surface or type three with disrupted articular surface. And then for minimally displaced uh, ones, this is Finn uh, Bogassin classification. Uh, as you see, this minimally displaced fracture does not uh, go even all the way into the metaphysis. This goes up to the joint, but if you see these lines are converging, this is like a hinge here. It can have 17% um, lay displacement as uh, shown by this uh, paper. And then if there is a parallel defect in a minimally displaced fracture, this can uh, have a higher rate of lay displacement. But this is only for minimally displaced ones. And then the most commonly used uh, nowadays is the classification by song. It is five grades or stages. Uh, grade one, less than two uh, within the metaphysis. Grade two, uh, less than two, but with a lateral gap. Grade three goes into the joint. Grade four is greater than two millimeter displacement, but no rotation. Grade five is uh, greater than two millimeter and with rotation. Type one and two are mostly stable. Three is uh, unstable, four is unstable, and five is unstable. And uh, the treatment can be guided according to this classification. We'll go uh, into detail of this uh, later on. But generally speaking, uh, if there is less than two millimeter displacement, you can treat them with a cast and you have to wash them closely because there is a 20% risk of uh, late displacement. And they usually require a minimum of six weeks of immobilization. If it's more than two millimeter displacement, it requires surgery in some form, either close reduction, percutaneous fixation with the aid of an arthrogram, or if it is uh, more than two millimeter and you cannot reduce it uh, to less than two millimeter, it uh, would require ORIF. 
And also, if there is articular incongruity, you'll require uh, open reduction. Um, many times, it is hard to tell if the fracture extends to the articular surface, uh, especially when they are less than two millimeter gap. In that case, CT or MRI can help. Uh, examination under anesthesia with arthrogram uh, affords you opportunity to assess the fracture pattern and manage definitely if uh, indicated. So when uh, can we do a non-surgical treatment, especially when uh, it's uh, less than two millimeter displaced? So you can cast at 90 degree flexion and full supination, close follow-up, weekly for first, th first three weeks. At this time, it's the time when it can displace and you have to watch closely. You will treat it for six weeks or so. Uh, closed reduction percutaneous spinning. Uh, it is uh, aided by pushing the fragment anteriorly to close the gap uh, because the fragment has displaced posterior laterally, so you push it anteriorly. It can be supplemented with arthrogram. Uh, this is a picture of uh, so the needle into the joint and putting a tie. You can see that the articular surface looks uh, very nice here. And then uh, uh, this can be fixed with two percutaneous spins or three whenever uh, needed. Uh, so for uh, displaced fractures more than two millimeter, uh, like Jacob two or song four classification and all that are rotationally unstable like Jacob three or song five. Uh, this is the standard of care. Uh, the approach we follow is a lateral uh, MCN and interval between triceps and radialis. And distally you can either do a coker or a EDC split or a Kaplan. Uh, I use a supine uh, position with the hand table, CM. I usually bring it from the foot end of the table. Uh, headlight, any source of uh, light uh, is very useful for these. Uh, sometimes I'll just use a uh, scope light. Surgical approach, uh, sterile tunicate, uh, curvilinear in CM center over the lateral condyle, and this is the deep dissection. Usually uh, it is already done by the injury. When you go in, you just put a finger and you are already at the fracture. But uh, uh, this is the interval, break your radialis and triceps, which you really follow. And this you can go either EDC split or Kaplan or uh, Coker. Uh, so uh, I've seen some people are scared of this injury and uh, worried when they have to treat this uh, fracture. But I think once you have uh, in a little tips and tricks, uh, uh, there is a, this is this will be like a common uh, another common elbow injury. Important to open the capsule uh, anteriorly and see the fracture site. Uh, extend distally to radial head. Visualize uh, articular surface to trochlea. Uh, Clean the fracture, evacuate clot, reduce with either a thumb, digit, a dental pick, or a towel clip, or a fork. Uh, insert pins uh, percutaneous and posterior to the NCM. Sometimes, uh, if you are, if it's difficult to put uh, put K wires through posterior to the NCM, you can put the wires through this, cut them a little long here, and bring the skin over the uh, skin. Uh, sorry, K wires. Uh, reduction, uh, I usually use first pin uh, in a flatter trajectory uh, through condyles across the physis into the medial metaphysis. Don't go into the cartilage, try to get some bone on the other side. Second pin is uh, steeper. Uh, divergent pins at angle of 45 to 60 degree are better. This view is very important to see. Uh, don't get fooled by the metaphysis because you can have a good uh, reduction at the metaphysis, but there could be a gap or a step in the articular surface. So you have to make sure that you see it. And a long, uh, narrow right angle retractor is very useful. So there are two ways of fixation. Mostly, either you can use uh, K wires, two or three in a divergent fashion, or you can also use a a screw. Uh, all pins should engage medial cortex. Don't just go into the cartilage. It would not have a good hold. Uh, 
Second, uh, if you're using a screw, mm -hmm. you go across the uh, metaphyseal area and avoid the oligarchan region here. The goal is to uh, start early intermobilization, and if you have crossed the oligarchan, uh, that is counterproductive. What am I doing? So the main trips and tricks are you, you can use a sterile tunique, stay anterior, use a long narrow retractor to see the fracture, do not get fooled by lateral metaphysis and use a light source. So in summary, uh, for treatment, less than two millimeter displacement, intact medial hinge, uh, you can treat with cast. Uh, two to four millimeter displacement can be treated with a close reduction percutaneous spinning if you can bring it less to less than a two millimeter displacement. And also uh, utilize arc program to make sure that your articular integrity is maintained. If you have a fracture with a more than four millimeter displacement or there is an articular incongruity, DU requires open reduction and internal fixation. Now, the main complications of this injury are lateral overgrowth seen in around 75%. There is no uh, clinical sequel to that. Uh, some uh, uh, authors have suggested uh, closing the periosteum over the lateral aspect, uh, and that helps reduce the lateral prominence. Uh, other common complications can be cubitus varus, uh, or decreased range of motion or stiffness, uh, tardy ulnar nerve palsy. Tardy ulnar nerve palsy doesn't show right away. It may take uh, up to 20 years to show up. So, and growth disturbance, et cetera, are of low incidence. Okay, so, so should the close reduction be attempted in highly displaced fractures? Uh, usually we, call these kind of fractures as a fracture of necessity and they require open reduction. But this paper from a song, they uh, did close reduction and fixation in uh, highly displaced fractures. So like they had uh, 17 stage three fractures, uh, 40 stage four and six uh, stage five fractures in the study. And they could reduce uh, 13 out of 17 in stage three to less than one millimeter. 30 out of 40 to less than two millimeter and almost 50% of uh, stage five to less than two millimeter. They did not notice any major complications uh, and they suggested that the, if the displacement after uh, close reduction still exceeds two millimeter or there is an article in incongruity, uh, open reduction is, uh, and internal fixation is recommended. Uh, what should be used, uh, wires or screw? Uh, so there are studies, uh, in favor of uh, both, like this one showed higher rate of non-union with K wire fixation uh, in JBJS, and this one uh, from Europe uh, showed uh, no case of non-union fracture. So they are all over the place. Uh, this was a, a recent one from 2020 in JBJS, although leg like, screw fixation is biomechanically superior. So they suggest that superior has higher union and lower infection rates. Uh, but uh, the disadvantage is that uh, it really requires removal because of growth concerns. Uh, so this uh, from 2022 in shoulder and elbow, it's, they did a systematic review. They did not find any difference between uh, union rates uh, or infection between all fixation techniques. Uh, in fact, they suggested unburied K wires demonstrated a shorter time to union and the greatest post-operative range of motion. Uh, additionally, unburied K wires may be removed in clinic. Uh, this was a new thing for me while uh, uh, looking for, you know, a little literature. Uh, they talk about a posterior lateral approach that the normal teaching, uh, orthodox teaching or conventional teaching has been that we should not go posteriorly because the blood supply comes from the posterior and avoid any dissection posteriorly. But these reports, uh, uh, they suggest the posterior lateral approach to the distal humerus for uh, ORIF of lateral condyle. They utilize this uh, posterior lateral approach. Uh, and then uh, this lateral condyle is right in front of it. Uh, their main argument is that uh, this avoids uh, a lot of soft tissue, tissue dissection. And it's not uh, the posterior uh, approach which would be harmful, but it is more of a uh, stripping of soft tissues, trying to reduce the fracture, which is harmful. Uh, they had 20 patients uh, over a four year period with a mean follow-up 12 months, and they had full union range of movement, no complications. Uh, 
uh, either clinical or radiological. Uh, I think uh, it's uh, only 12 months and uh, AVN might appear late, so it might be too early of a follow-up. Uh, I would be hesitant to follow uh, this approach or change my practice uh, until something uh, more comes up. Uh, when I was in India, I, I used this technique, but I also found this uh, article uh, from uh, uh, Japan. Uh, we used to do tension band wiring, uh, and the, the benefit of this was that you could start moving uh, the elbow next day. I did not require any uh, immobilization, uh, but the problem was that you had to go back and remove all this uh, uh, implants although it required a small incision to remove uh, this from here. So this is something new uh, uh, concerning that the screw might provide better advantage uh, than a K wire. Uh, why not use a bioabsorbable screw? And uh, this study, they had 86 patients, 43 with absorbable screws and 43 with K wire, and they did not find any difference or uh, uh, any uh, major complications. Thank you so much. Uh, any questions? There is no uh, question in the chat box, sir. Uh, okay. Mm. Sir, uh, I have a question. How do you, uh, what do you use in your practice? K wires or screws? So we mostly use uh, uh, K wires. K wires, okay. Yeah. We and, mostly uh, use K wires, uh, but if it's an old, older child, then we sometimes have used a screw, but mostly we use K wires and we leave them uh, outside the skin. Only one of the surgeons here buries under the skin, but most of us uh, have left it out. There is a, so yeah, come. There could be a little stiffness, but eventually they come back to almost normal after a few months. Uh, so there is one more question. Uh, do you uh, bury them or keep it outside? No, keep them outside. That's what I'm saying. Like we keep them outside, we bend them and keep them outside the skin. Okay. And then we can remove them in the clinic. They don't have to come back to the OR. Uh, sir, have you seen uh, lateral spur formation uh, in your practice ever? Yeah, it's very common. So recently we have started putting a, a suture over the periosteum or soft tissue. I uh, haven't uh, seen a longer follow-up with that, but uh, I've heard like my, some expert opinions that if they suture, they have noticed less spur formation. I don't know if you have any other suggestions or if you have come across anything for that. Uh, sir, how long you immobilize them in cast? So for lateral condyle, usually six, or almost six weeks. So we'll put them in a slab, posterior and a U slab, and then when they come in clinic after a week or two weeks, then we put them in a cast after a wound check. Sir, uh, any tips on reduction of rotated fragments? Uh, do you use a redu reduction clamp or do you prefer joysticking with K wire? So, so the first thing is uh, to see how the fragment is re uh, rotated. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Uh, what I have found is once you have noticed, okay, this has to go flexion and then pushing with the thumb into uh, the medial side and medially helps a lot. The problem with these fracture is that they get reduced in flexion and you can't see them in flexion. So, so it's always difficult that uh, once you have reduced it, you, you cannot see them. That's why you use this long, uh, narrow retractor and uh, uh, anteriorly you should have adequate exposure. I usually put a, like a small home end, I mean, um, uh, like a baby home end across into the medial shaft. And then I can see all across the joint surface. So after I have achieved close reduction, like it's not uh, adequate, I can either use a small towel clip or I would use a joystick uh, method and then uh, bring it close. And then I also utilize some light source like a uh, arthroscope light to if, if I'm having a small uh, opening and I want to see the reduction is adequate. 
Does it help? Did it make sense or no? Uh, so one question is from Dr. Neeraj Joshi. Six weeks isn't very long immobilization period to render elbow stiffness. Sorry, what? There is a... Uh, Six weeks uh, isn't very long immobilization period. Oh, it, it is long, but uh, uh, if you don't do it, you can have a higher non-union because they are, one, they are intra-articular. Uh, there's a lot of stress from muscles over that area. So they are prone to non-union. Uh, if, if it's totally undisplaced and you are happy at four weeks, you can uh, start guarded range of movements, but uh, yeah, you have to, you know, uh, decide about getting a worse complication like non-union. So you have to be, uh, you know, cautious. But initially they, they have problems with movement, but ultimately they come back. One, uh, sir, any tips on understanding the morphology of segment on open reduction in case of delayed presentation? Uh, yeah, it's, so, yeah, so sometimes a CT can help. So getting a CT scan prior can help and uh, you can have an idea where the fragments are rotated. Usually they are rotated. Uh, uh, so if it's a right elbow, so they are rotated counterclockwise because of the pull of extensor muscles left they are rotated clockwise mostly and then you have to bring them 180 degree back depending on how much rotation is 90 degree or 180 degree and uh, and you have to make sure like you can see so what helps usually is you try to see where the cartilage is and cartilage has to go towards the radial head side so you have to sometimes so you have to see uh, in multiple planes, like you have to rotate this way also, and you have to rotate this way also. So you have to see your cartilage, well, it could be rounded off. It can be a problem. So I would say maybe utilize a CT scan in those cases and uh, also see where the cartilage is, where the fracture line goes, spend some time uh, looking at it and then, uh, then proceed because every case will be different. Sir, so, uh, there is one question uh, from Dr. Pony. Despite good articular reduction, there is a metaphyseal spike or step. Should we accept it or we, re we should do redo the reduction? No, so, so that's what we discussed that don't get fooled by the metaphyseal uh, reduction. Sometimes some people would do a metaphyseal reduction and there would be a rotation or gap or step. So articular reduction is the most important. Metaphyseal spike, you can ignore that. But you have to make sure there is no rotation and there is no step, there is no gap. Or if there is gap like one millimeter, that's acceptable, but not a major gap. Because you could have a combination at the metaphyseal area or you could have a uh, the periosteals might have stripped off some bone from there. So don't get uh, fooled by metaphyseal area. Most important is the joint. Uh, so next question is uh, from Dr. Naveen Kumar, uh, which is the gold reduction approach to for open reduction uh, for lateral condyle having the least complications? So lateral approach between uh, so skin and and curvilinear and mostly you, you just do the skin and CN and you are at the fracture site, but make sure you have enough exposure anteriorly. So if you have to extend it a little bit, extend it, or just put, uh, uh, so, so first wash that, clean that area uh, with irrigation, and then put a small home and across the shaft that, and then lift anterior structures up. And you can see, until you see the medial end of the fracture and the joint, you cannot proceed further. I, I always see the uh, reduction. I don't uh, depend upon re uh, radiology for that if I'm opening it. So gold standard is still lateral. I have never done a posterior. In fact, this was the first time I saw that there is a posterior lateral approach mentioned. 
I had no idea before uh, starting for this talk. I should admit that. Uh, next question is from Gaurav, sir. Have you seen growth related issues in longer follow? Uh, we have seen uh, like a fishtail uh, deformity very often. Uh, there are mixed studies about uh, fishtail, whether they can lead to arthritis or not. Some would say it can lead to some say they don't. Uh, yeah, we have seen some fishtail deformities. Uh, sir, and I have seen like non-union, I've seen a lot of uh, uh, cubitus valgus, uh, but uh, that will be a separate uh, discussion. Okay. Sorry. Uh, we had a, a good series of questions. Uh, anyone, any question you can post in the chat box? I think we have covered everything on the list and uh, that will be all for today. If anyone has any query or any question, you can post in the fellows group. We can also discuss there. Uh, thank you so much, sir, uh, for the nice lecture. Oh, welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks thank for you, your sir. session. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye, bye bye thank you bye recording stopped